Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is the physics of work and we want to know first what is meant by work and how do you know if work is being done on an object. Second, what is the equation for work and third, how are positive and negative work distinguished from one another. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This is our first video in our tutorial series on work and energy. Before we begin talking about work, let's talk about where we're going with this tutorial series. In previous video tutorial series, we've talked about Newton's laws and kinematics. And one of the big ideas of those two models combined is that we can use Newton's laws to determine the acceleration of the object. We look at the forces that act upon the object, we determine the net force and find the acceleration. This acceleration is related to things like the distance the object would travel or how fast the object would be moving. We have a series of kinematics equations that help us relate acceleration to things like distance, final velocity, initial velocity, and time. We can use these two models in order to determine how fast an object will be going, how high it will go, and how far it will skid. Along the way, we may introduce several representations like velocity time graphs, position time graphs, and dot diagrams. In the work and energy model, we attempt to answer the same types of questions, but do it in a different Different way. We imagine that object or collection of objects being a part of the system. And we look at how does the system interact with the surroundings, what forces act upon that system, that object or collection of objects. We do this in order to determine what is happening to the kinetic or potential energy of the object so that we can predict will the speed increase or decrease, will the height increase or decrease, or will these remain the same. And finally, we want to determine the answers to questions like how fast will it go, how high will it go and how far will it skid. In physics, work is considered a means of transferring energy to or out of an object. Work occurs whenever there's a force acting upon a moving or displaced object. That force could be with the object's motion or against the object's motion. That is, in the same direction that the object's moving or in the opposite direction that the object's moving. When considering work, we have to think about two big ideas, force and displacement. Let's talk about some examples of work, but before we do, let's review the requirements. There must be a force acting upon the object, and the object must move or be displaced. And there must be some component of the force or part of it that's directed either in the same direction or the opposite direction as the displacement. So let's consider. Two students push on an out-of-gas car in order to move it towards a gas pump. Here we have work being done on the car. There's a force acting on the car. The students are pushing on it, and the car is moving. And the force is in the same direction that the car is moving. In our second example, let's consider a freshman exerts a force on a world civilization book in order to lift it up to the top shelf of his locker. In this case, there's work being done on the book. The student is pushing on it, and the book is moving. The student pushes up to move the book upwards. That's work. In our third example, let's consider a book that has been nudged off a table and free falls and accelerates towards the ground. This is work being done on the book. There's a force of gravity acting on the book, and it acts in the same direction that the book is displaced, downwards. That's an example of work. In all these examples, we have a force that acts upon an object to cause the object's displacement. Now let's consider some non-examples of work in light of these three requirements of work. In the first situation, a teacher is pushing up on a wall, becoming totally exhausted in an unsuccessful effort to move the wall. In this situation, there's a force on the wall, but the wall is not moving, and so it doesn't meet the three requirements of work. There's no work done on the wall. In the second situation, a child pulls on a dog chain in an effort to pull the dog along the sidewalk, but the dog just doesn't budge. In this case, there's a force on the dog. There's a tension force, but if the dog doesn't move, there's no work done on the dog. In our third situation, a student sits at her desk listening attentively to her physics teacher who wouldn't. In this situation, there's a force up on the student, a normal force up and a gravity force down, but the student doesn't move. It's not displaced, and so there's no work done on the student. In all three examples, we have situations in which there's a force, but no displacement, and so there's no work done on these objects. 
Mathematically, the amount of work done upon an object depends upon three variables. It depends upon the amount of force, the amount of displacement, and the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. We can express these dependencies with the equation work, W, equal force, F, times displacement, D, times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement vectors. The unit for work is the joule, abbreviated J. One joule is equal to one newton times one meter, as inferred by this equation. The most complicated part of the equation is the angle theta. Theta is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. If these two vectors are in the same direction, then theta is zero degrees. If they are in opposite directions, then theta is 180 degrees. And if they're neither in the opposite or in the same direction, we simply measure the angle between the force and the displacement vectors. And that angle measurement gives us the measurement of theta in the work equation. In physics, there are scalar and vector quantities. Work is a scalar quantity. That is, it doesn't have a direction associated with it. For vector quantities like force and acceleration, they can sometimes be positive or negative. And the positive or negative tells us something about the direction of those vectors. But not so for work, since work is a scalar quantity. Work can be positive or negative depending on the relative direction of the force and the displacement vectors. Let's talk about it. When, the component, when there is a component of force in the same direction as the displacement or the motion of the object, we say positive work is done on the object. The force is with the motion. If there is a component of force in the opposite direction as the object's motion, opposite to the displacement, then we say that the work is negative. The force is against the motion. If the force is neither with nor against the motion, but at right angles to the motion, then the angle between the force and the displacement vector is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and the work is zero joules. In these situations, we have positive and negative work being done whenever there's a component of force with or against the motion. While it's jumping ahead a bit, what we can say is that when the force is with the motion, that it adds energy to the object. And when the force is against the motion, it takes energy away from the object. Let's consider this. A waiter carries a tray full of meals at a constant speed across the dining room, holding it by one arm. Is work being done upon the tray by the waiter? In this situation, there's an upward force upon the tray full of meals, and there's a horizontal displacement. The angle between the force and displacement vectors is 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And so, there's no work being done upon this tray full of meals. We can think of it like this. A vertical force could never cause a horizontal displacement, and as such, this vertical force does zero work upon the horizontally moving object. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with an action plan, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's three resources, any one of which you can find on our website. We put links to them in the description section below this video. Now, the first is a concept builder. The first two of three activities would be perfect follow-ups to this video. And our newly revised Minds on Physics mission on work would be perfect for this video. Finally, we have a tutorial page at our website on the topic of work, which makes for great follow-up to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.